Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm bringing you a review for the new Marvel Legends Rentral Wave figure, Despair. Unlike most of this wave, he is in no way tied to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and seems to be included here purely because he has crossed paths with Doctor Strange in the comics. As such, this figure is based on his comic appearance and not any sort of live action, though he did appear in the Cloak and Dagger live action series. But this is not that version, this is the comics version. Now admittedly, I don't know as much about Despair as I do a lot of the other characters in this wave, because even though I'm a pretty big fan of Marvel, I'm not someone who's super well versed in the comics. Especially anything past like the late 90s, because that's when I stopped really reading them. But what I can tell you is that I know he's a demon, and that he feeds on the despair of others, which is, you know, appropriate, given his name. And that he's crossed paths with, you know, a number of heroic characters trying to, you know, feed on their anguish, their sorrow, all that. And kind of gets his butt handed to him each time, so. That's about the sum total of my knowledge on despair here. But I will say he looks really cool. Anyway, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes. We're going to take a look at Despair's packaging. Then we'll put it up, we'll get a quick look at his Build-A-Figure piece, and then we'll see Despair himself, check out his posability, his accessories. I'm sure I'll do at least one group shot or comparison today, and then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So Despair comes in your standard Marvel Legends packaging. You get his Build-A-Figure call-out up here. You get just the plain Marvel logo, which hints off that this isn't from any specific movie or production. You get his name, you get the figure in a big open window, there's your Rintra leg right there, and you get the main Despair figure. You get his cape behind him, which looks really cool. I'm guessing it's made of like a rubberized plastic, I'd imagine it is. And then you also get two additional hands to replace his closed fist into more, you know, open hands. And if we go ahead and turn this to the side, we can see nice artwork of the character, which looks very cool. He's got this very monstrous look to his face that's kind of a cross between a skull and some sort of like melting flesh over his lips. I think that's really neat. Then we get a better look at the artwork here on the back. You get his name, you get his flavor text, which says, the embodiment of the ultimate evil, despair uses the fear of others to strengthen himself. So that's pretty short, but gives you a good idea who he is. I think, if I remember right, when they say the embodiment of the ultimate evil, I think they're referring to the Dweller in Darkness, who I think created Despair as sort of like an avatar to act in his stead. At least that's what I'm assuming they're referring to. Then on the bottom, we get our entire wave. You get your Rintra, complete a figure Then you get Doctor Strange, Wong, America Chavez, Master Mordo, and Astral Doctor Strange. So we get Despair himself. And then the last figure of the wave that we'll review next, Sleepwalker. So pretty cool. I do like the artwork. It's a bit different than what we've seen so far because it's not based on anyone's live action appearance. It's purely a drawing. And as such, you know, it does have a different feel and a different art style to it. And it looks really good. I think my the artwork here is one of my favorites so far. So that is the packaging, as neat as it is. And now that we've seen it, it's time to open it. All right, now we get to spare outside of his packaging. We can see all his accessories. We have our Build-A-Figure piece, which is the right leg of Rentra. And it'd be kind of hard to tell which leg it's supposed to be, honestly. But honestly, the easiest way to tell is look at the shape of the ankle and the hoof. This is the right leg. Plus, there's a little chart on the back of the box that tells you anyway. But yeah, it is the right leg, so make sure you put it you know, in the right spot there. It's pretty poseable, though. It's got, a, it's got an ankle rock. It's got ankle tilt and rotation here. It has a knee bend. Like that, and then it's even got a rotation there, like right above the, I guess, upper ankle joint, whatever you want to call it. So, pretty nice. And then his accessories are actually meant for him. We get open hands and the cape, which is cool because it's two-toned, right? On the outside, it's white. The inside, it's black. It's very shredded up looking. They did a really good job with this. Uh, just be careful not to, I don't know, get caught on things. Cause maybe, you could rip it, maybe. I don't know, toward the edge. Now... I have seen this body type before. You guys may already know, Legends is a line that I've been wanting to collect for a while. Like every time I go to the store, I, I look at the Marvel Legends stuff and have to tell myself over and over again, no, you don't need it. You don't need to collect anything else. But obviously I've finally caved. Uh, I know I've seen this body type before on you know other characters that either have like a skin tight suit or maybe aren't really actually wearing clothes like Silver Surfer. In fact, I've this has got to be like a Silver Surfer body, right? Now, 
having seen this before and getting it in hand, I can tell it's gotta be quite an old body type because it feels different. It feels older and I don't know, shakier, if that makes any sense. So the head is on a ball joint and I think it's only a single ball joint, but it's also hinged which is something I haven't seen yet. So he can look way up or way down. So that's very different. You sacrifice a little bit of that circular motion for being able to look way up or way down. And I actually kind of prefer that. I think that's really cool. He can look down, look straight up. The other figure so far can't do that. He has a chest fly over here. You can see that are what we call butterfly joints, right? Where he can roll his shoulders back, roll them forward, like he's flexing. Uh, so that's kind of neat. And he's got universal shoulders. He's got the bicep swivel, and now his elbows, he has double bend elbows, but they seem to be made of a very soft plastic, and it's not something I'm crazy about, because I feel like this could break after repeated use. It feels like this is all like rubber in here. I don't know why they did that, but it doesn't feel like the most sturdy thing ever. I mean, it works, it'll go, but it feels flimsy. I think it should have been a harder plastic. Let's have the universal wrists, which do pivot pretty nicely. He has an ab crunch, which actually has some hard ratcheted points. So it's got about what, four or three positions on it. So not the best. I prefer more fluid motion, but still there, still neat. His waist articulation is weird because of where it kind of cuts off. You leave him with these you know, weird geometrical shapes in the waist area. The hips are universal. They can go pretty much every which way. Can't swing back very far because it was like a little molded butt there. Is a high thigh swivel. He's got double bend knees, which work a lot better than the elbows do, thankfully. Uh, he has that like boot swivel, even though he's not really wearing boots per se. Ankle rock and ankle tilt. Now, he doesn't seem to have a full rotation like some of the newer body types do. It's just tilting, not like spinning. But honestly, the rotation thing's kind of weird to me anyway, so I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind that's missing. Um, so, I mean, he's okay. He feels old. He doesn't feel quite as advanced as maybe some of the other uh, figures I've handled, but he's not bad by any means. He just, you know, it feels like a figure from, I don't know, a decade ago or so. Also, his head looks kind of big on his body. Like, he's muscular, but he's also really kind of scrawny looking at the same time. It's weird. Now to get his cape on, you're actually gonna have to pop his head off because there's no like opening here, you know, just has a slide right over the shoulders and his big dome's not gonna allow that to just slide over. So, pop it off. Came off pretty easily, so that's good. First time I've had to pop a figure's head off to get the cape on, but there's a first time for everything, right? So we got the cape. I'll just push this back on. That looks a lot better. That really fleshes him out. Makes him look not quite so overly lithe for, you know, it's supposed to be a powerful character. I like that. It looks pretty good. And the cape really complements the rest of him very well. and Adds a lot of texture and just makes him a lot busier looking, which is not a bad thing because he was very plain looking to begin with. Uh, you can see the difference in texture in the cape, right? The outside is very flat and the inside is a lot rougher. So I like when they do that. You get the different kinds of texturing on both sides. The face, interestingly, again, I'm not super familiar with the spare, but it looks like he has intentional little dots, certain areas around his like brow ridge and middle of his forehead there. Pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and try out the open hands so we can see what those look like. We'll just pop these bad boys off, and luckily they're not too hard to get out. Put the open hands in. There you go. Now I can get him looking a little, little creepier, more evil, like he's reaching out for you. You know, I like him. Um, he he is, you know, kind of simple looking, and I think without the cape, you know, maybe a little bit too just skin and bones. But when you get the total package here, I really think it comes together and looks a lot better. Now, I don't have a lot to uh, pull from when it comes to doing group shots right now since I just started this Legends collection. So the best I can do for you guys, just to give you something, is a comparison with the other, you know, what we call villainous character for the wave, and that's Master Mordo, who we reviewed just a few days ago. And honestly, I don't even know if it's fair to call Mordo a villain per se, but he's an antagonist, so we're just going to group them together. 
you can see two very different takes on the idea of an antagonist. You get one from a live action movie, which is a bit more grounded. And though his outfit is very intricate, he is still just a man. And then you get this over the top thing, which looks like, you know, what would happen if like Blackheart and Anti-Venom had a baby. So yeah, they're kind of each doing their own thing. One as a pure manifestation of evil, you know, some kind of a boogeyman. And then one, the manifestation of the evil of man. Whoa, we just got really deep, man. And this is going to complete our look at the new Marvel Legends Despair. This character, I mean, I do find him to be a little bit plain. I mean, he's just purely black and white. Kind of looks like a demonic luchador, if you ask me. But there are some details I also appreciate. I really like the cape, and I love the attention to detail with all the holes and the fraying and everything. I like the fact that it's two-tone. You got this, you know, bright white on the outside, pitch black on the inside. And he does look cool. He's got a very cool face sculpt. Uh, kind of reminds me of, uh, was it Crossbones? Isn't that his name? The mask he wears? Uh, the body type I find a little plain, and I know it's one that gets used a lot. So it does feel a little samey, though, you know, it's funny coming for me since this is the first, you know, toy I have with that body type. But I've seen it so many times. I do wish he was a little more unique in that end. Uh, but he's cool. He's okay. I don't believe he's had a Legends figure before. I could be wrong. So for people that are a fan of this character, you know, this is something that's very cool to get. Because, you know, this is the first time you can get him in plastic form. So he is good for that. Um, as far as the figure himself, like I said, kind of basic. He's got one extra set of hands and he's got a cape. And that's really about it. Um, so not bad, just not the most impressive thing. Maybe not, you know, the best bang for your 20-something dollars. But he's okay. So, you know, I have kind of a, a lukewarm reception of this guy. I think if you want a despair toy, you should absolutely get him. Uh, I think if you're just trying to complete the wave and complete the builder figure, you won't be upset you got this guy because he is at least unique compared to the others. And he's, you know, he's pretty good. Doesn't have any QC issues. Not a bad figure. Of course, that is just my take on Despair. So now I want to know what you all think of him. Is this a toy that you've been wanting? Is this a character that's, you know, on your radar to get a figure? Are you a fan of him in the comics? Are you hoping he makes the jump to the MCU at some point? Who knows, maybe he could. Or do you not like this? Either, like, no love for the character, you don't have any, you know, personal connection to him, or you just don't like the figure. Any and all feedback's always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the new Marvel Legends Despair from the Retro Wave. With all that said, I will see you next time.